let's talk about all of the amazing romances coming out in the next few months. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Katie and welcome to my channel, Katie's Book Nook. I love romance just as much as I love fantasy, so I wanted to go through all of my anticipated romance books for the first half of the year. If you saw last week, I posted my most anticipated fantasy books for the first half of the year, so this is the companion video to that, and today we are focusing all things romance. I will say with indie romances and self-published romances, they aren't really announced that far in advance, so I might make like a separate video, maybe like a smaller video each month or something like that about upcoming indie romances for the next month or so, but don't really have enough data right now to do it for the full six months, so I will just be focusing on traditionally published romances. And I do also want to mention that HarperCollins Union is still on strike, and some of these books are published by Avon, which is a subsidiary underneath HarperCollins, and I think that they have started negotiations, but I will still be withholding reviews of these books until they come to an agreement, so even if I talk about it, if I were to theoretically read it, like I wouldn't give it a review until publication. So I will leave some resources about that down below if you want to sign the petition. And with that, let's get into all the books. We have so many to talk about today. I literally compiled like all of the romance books that I pretty much could find. I'm sure I missed a few, but all the romance books traditionally published that I could find January through June of this year. So let's talk through all of them. I'm going to give very brief tagline descriptions of each, otherwise this video would be 14 hours long. But let's dive into it, starting off with January. First up, we have Loathe to Love You by Ali Hazelwood, and this is a novella collection of three novellas, Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and Below Zero, and she writes Steminist novels, which are focused on women that are in the STEM field, and as a woman in STEM, I love that. So these were originally fan fiction that were turned into novellas, and then the bind-up was published, so Under One Roof is the roommate trope, uh, Stuck With You is Stuck in the Elevator trope, and Below Zero is like the hurt, comfort, rescue trope, like, in the Arctic. And I love this, I actually just read it, and definitely highly recommend I Love Allie Hazelwood. Next up we have X's and O's by Amy Leah. Set on You by Amy Leah was like my top romance book of 2022, so I'm very excited about this one. And it takes place in Boston, which I'm a Boston girly, so love that. And this is about a romance novel obsessed social media influencer, aka a bookstagrammer, is on the hunt for true love and in that journey revisits all of her exes. Sorry Bro by Talene Varuski is about an Armenian-American woman and she basically rejects her ex's proposal and she knows that he's not what she's looking for so then via her mother's prompting she goes to explore Armenia to meet fellow Armenian-American men but the person she falls for at this conference is a fellow Armenian woman. Do I Know You by Emily Wiverly and Austin Sigmund Broca is about a couple that has lost their spark and they go on a vacation. People think that they're single at the bar and introduce them to each other and from there they kind of go on a role-playing game acting like they don't know each other um, and then this kind of rekindles their relationship. Glitterland by Alexis Hall is about a down-on-his-luck pulp fiction writer who has given up hope when he meets Darian, a larger-than-life man that is full of vibrancy but will be enough to pull Ash out of his spiral of hopelessness. Final offer by Lauren Asher. Callahan Kane must spend a summer at his family's lake house, his childhood love, in order to receive his billionaire inheritance from his late grandfather. The problem is that he is a an alcoholic hiding in plain sight and when he shows up to the summer house, it turns out that his childhood love, Lana, claims to own the house as well. The Fraud Squad by Kyla Sao is about a working woman who infiltrates Singapore's high-class society to fulfill her dreams or risk losing everything in the process, including herself. The Reunion by Kayla Olson is about two teen co-stars who return to a reunion for their show and they find that their feelings for each other might not have just been scripted. Moving on to February. We have Radiant Sin by Katie Robert. This is the next in her Dark Olympus series. You guys know that I love Katie Robert. And this is a retelling of Apollo and Cassandra. Cassandra is part of a fallen house. Um, and so when Apollo asks her to go undercover to be his date for a week-long party by a new power play, she says yes under the condition that her and her sister can finally leave Olympus when this is done. But of course, the fake dating leads to more feelings and more complications. 
I love this series. I love Katie Robert. Very excited for this one. Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. This is the book that I'm actually reading right now. I'm like halfway through and I'm obsessed. And it's a steamy rom-com about a staunchy professor and his bubbly gardening neighbor who he can't get out of his head as he is writing his novel and she is gardening outside of his house constantly. Perfect so far. Too Wrong to be Right by Melanie Johnson is about Flora's cat who has sworn off dating until she finds Mr. Right and she has a meat disaster with Mick at his family's funeral home so she decides to start a friendship with him because she doesn't think that he's Mr. Right but this friendship leads to more complicated feelings. Take the Lead by Alexis Dara. This is about a reality show dancer, so like a Dancing with the Stars type show, and she's on her fourth season and she really really wants to win and she thinks that Stone, who is a star on an Alaskan survivalist reality show, is her ticket to winning. But she just found out from the producers that they want to set them up on a fake showmance for the season. Just My Type by Fallon Ballard. When the job of her dreams, a relationship-prone journalist must stay single, but that is hard because her high school ex has just become the rival journalist at her job. Best Served Hot by Amanda Elliott. Two rival food critics learn that their opposing tastes just might be the recipe for love. And it's a foodie rom-com. For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding. An aspiring LA screenwriter falls head over heels for a bossy and beautiful movie star and they decide to take their own chance on love and cast themselves as the leads in their own starstruck romance. Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score and this is a sequel to one of her most known books. It's about a chief of police with PTSD from being shot and his neighbor who he begins a fling with but his neighbor is hiding a secret for the reason that she's in town and if he were to find out it would ruin everything. Twisted by Emily McIntyre is part of the Never After series, which are contemporary retellings of Disney villain <laughs> stories. And this one is about Aladdin and which Julian, a street rat, enters into a marriage with Yasmin, who is the daughter of one of the richest men in the world, in order to inherit what he believes to be is his. Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. This book is all over social media and I myself am very excited to read it. And it so this release date in February is for its traditional publishing. And this is about figure skater Stasi, whose team has to share a rink with the college hockey team and she pretty much hates all hockey players. Or does she? Nobody Puts Rom-Coms in a Corner by Katherine Freeman. Sally is a classic romantist and Harry is a classic cynic, but a drunken bet leads these flatmates to doing the viral like dance lift move from Dirty Dancing and then they go viral so then they kind of realize they have a financial stake if they keep recreating rom-com moments and so they do that but does that lead to love? Ruby Spencer's Whiskey Year by Rochelle Billow. A 30-something American food writer moves to Scotland to find inspiration for her cookbook and then she meets a Scotsman that she can't resist. I love a good Scotsman romance. The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. A shy bookworm enlists her charming neighbor to help her score a date not knowing that he is the obscure author that she has been corresponding with. We've gone to March. The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. I read the first book in the series Mr. Wrong Number last year and it was really cute. Loved it. This is about Hallie and Jake and they have a one night stand and then they match on a dating app and they decide that they don't want to date each other but they start to place a bet and help each other find the one and the bet is who can find true love at first. Off the Map by Trish Dollar. A world traveler and a cartographer share a ride to a friend's wedding in Ireland as they find themselves on a cross-country road trip full of detours and chemistry. The Build Up by Tati Richardson. A truly unfortunate first day of work leads to a sparkling romance. Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. Ben and Alexi's first encounter on the Pacific Crest Trail begins with a snake and then they keep running into each other on their wilderness treks and they wonder if it's possible to hold on to something this wild and wonderful. That Girl Wrong Side by Ginny Baird. This is about two families who get double booked at a Nantucket house for a vacation and so they kind of begin a rivalry and the son and the daughter from the families of course fall in love while their families are bickering over this beach house. Rogue by Elle Kennedy and this is her new new adult series and it takes place in Sandover Prep where there are dark secrets and no one is safe and so it's got like that prep school new adult vibe going on. Let's move on to April. 
Happy Place by Emily Henry, which is a lot of people's most anticipated romance book because she is a very well-known romance author and this is about a couple who has broken up months prior and they didn't tell anyone and they just pretend that they're still together on their annual best friends trip. Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. A comedy writer thinks she's sworn off love until a dreamily handsome pop star flips the script on its head. The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. A woman discovers the father of the child that she is nannying may be her biggest only fan. Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. A recently divorced doctor is all set on hating her new male co-worker until he starts writing her heartfelt letters and she starts responding and they start a correspondence. The Fiance Farce by Alexandria Bella Flor. A steamy sapphic rom-com about a quiet bookseller and a romance novel cover model who agree to a modern day marriage of convenience. The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. What starts out as a fake wedding date turns into something that neither of these childhood enemies expected. Falling Hard for the Royal Guard by Megan Clausen. And basically this is about a woman that falls for a British Royal Guard and she's super charming and he has to stay, you know, stoic and can't, can't talk to anyone while he's wearing the, that cool hat. Jasmine and Jake Rock the Boat by Sonia Lali. An impulsive decision to join an Alaskan cruise brings the chance for an onboard enemies to lovers romance. Role playing by Kathy Yardley. Two middle-aged gamers grow their online connection and maybe just fall in love IRL. Vacation Wars by Megan Quinn. Tessa's childhood pact to find her a soulmate before her sister gets married culminates in a prank war when they go to Santorini in the weeks leading up to her sister's wedding and Miles, her childhood crush, just happens to be working at the resort that they are staying at. Bear With Me Now by Katie Shepard. Tegan goes to a wilderness therapy retreat in Montana after suffering some panic attacks and is chased by a bear and almost dies until he is saved by Darcy, the camp's handywoman. Tegan then hires Darcy to be his sober companion back home in New York. Moving on to May. We have Holiday Read by Taylor Cole. Romance fanatic Candace meets Alexis and she thinks that her happy ending is finally on its way until she discovers that Alexis has been using their courtship as inspiration for his latest romance novel that he is struggling to write. Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I read When in Rome, which is the first book in the series last year and I thought it was so cute and I'm really excited for this one. The owner of the local flower shop, Annie, makes a questionable deal with a tatted up bodyguard of Amelia Rose, her brother's famous pop star fiance, a delightful friends to lovers romance begins. Ah, oh, this just seems so cute and I just love the cozy small town vibes. Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. A random connection sends two strangers on a day-long adventure and they promise to meet up in a year. One of them shows up and the other doesn't, but then nine years later, finally, finally he shows up again. Summer Reading by Jen McKinley. A woman who would rather do anything but reading meets a swoon-worthy bookworm and sparks fly. Love at First Set by Jennifer Dugan. A woman gives a, another woman a drunken pep talk in the bathroom and she turns out to be the bride to be at the wedding they are attending and actually convinces her to ditch her groom and they have to deal with the consequences of that. Famous for a Living by Melissa Ferguson, a famous social media star goes to Montana to help her uncle and becomes the social media manager for a small national park. Mrs. Nash's Ashes by Sarah Adler. A starry-eyed romantic and a cynical writer and an elderly woman's ashes take the road trip of the century. The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren, which is the follow-up to... Oh, why can't I remember? Anyways, their last book that was like an experiment and had DNA on the cover. Anyways, a romance novelist and a documentary filmmaker team up to craft the perfect Hollywood love story and take their careers to the next level if only they can keep the chemistry between them under control. The Boyfriend Candidate by Ashley Winstead. A shy school librarian decides that she's going to have her first ever one night stand and so she meets Logan in a hotel bar, but then the hotel sets on fire and he carries her out of the fire where there are a bunch of photographers and they snap pictures of them because he is a politician that is up for election and these pictures could cost him his election seat um, unless they decide to fake date. The book proposal by KJ Mitchie. Romance writer Gracie is facing some writer's block and so she drunkenly emails her unrequited high school crush, Colin, who is now an attorney, and he decides to answer her. The two form an unlikely relationship, and she draws from his relationship woes as inspiration for her romance novel, which has unforeseen consequences. That Summer Feeling by Bridget Morrissey. A divorced woman attends a sleepaway camp for adults only. She reconnects with a man from her past, 
only to start developing feelings for his sister instead. Chef's Choice by TJ Alexander, a trans man and a trans woman decide to date so that Jean Paris can inherit his celebrity chef's grandfather's culinary empire. Jana Goes Wild by Farah Heron. One woman tries to shed her perfect image at a destination wedding in the Serengeti National Park where her ex is also there with their five-year-old daughter. It's one thing to go wild, but is it too wild to start developing feelings for your ex? Stars Collide by Rachel Lisi. It's a slow burn romance between two dynamic divas when they have to team up to do a collab stage for the Grammys. All right, and can you believe it? The last month for this video, June. Same time next summer, Annabelle Monaghan. An engaged woman comes face to face with her first love, who she hasn't seen in 14 years, but she spent every summer with growing up. And then he broke her heart and it calls into question everything she's ever known about herself. Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I already mentioned I love Ali Hazelwood, so this is like one of my top anticipated romances. And it's about rival physicists who collide in a vortex of academic feuds and fake dating shenanigans. And I just, I know I'm gonna love this already. Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey, which is the companion to Secretly Yours. A down on her luck Napa heiress, Natalie, who we meet in the first book, suggests a mutually beneficial marriage of convenience to a man she can't stand in order to revive her own business and to help his budding winery. Mismatch by Wendy Million is about a woman who signs up for a service to help you find your soulmate only to be matched with her ex. Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. A ghostwriter and a struggling actor help each other on page and in the bedroom. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. An overworked book publicist with a perfectly planned future hits a snag when she starts to fall for her roommate only to realize that he's living seven years in the past. And the last book I have today is Play For Me by Libby Hubshire. An athletic trainer's new job takes her to a boarding school in New Hampshire where she's surprised to learn that her new roommates are all men, including a very handsome one who plays by his own rules. All right, guys, I honestly can't believe I got through all of those as fast as I did, um, but I just really wanted to give the very general gist of each one so I could fit as many titles as possible without losing my voice. Please let me know what your most anticipated romances are for 2023. Please leave any sort of heart emoji if you have watched this far. I appreciate you all so much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, yada yada, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.